Hello, Tubers, this is Kurt with Edibles and Exotics coming to you from sunny Mesa, Arizona. And today we're going to be heading back to George's house in Gold Canyon to do an update on his budding food forest that he's got going on, okay? So, uh, the last time we were out there, I think, was June 4th, and it's now uh, July 31st, so it's almost been two months. And, uh, you know, we've had record setting heat in the valley for pretty much the past two months. So I think we've had uh, consecutive days above, uh, what was it 115? I think it was like almost 20. And then uh, above 110, it was like 30 something, almost 40 uh, days. So I wanna show you guys uh, what his yard looks like, uh, what he has been growing that fared well and what didn't fare well. and. Uh, you know, see what he did. Um, I gave him a lot of recommendations. Um, one of the things uh, that he really ran with was the sweet potatoes. Um, I've recommended those to pretty much everyone in a lot of my videos and uh, my customers and stuff. And, uh, you know, just to sum it up, sweet potatoes, you can go to Walmart, get a bag of sweet potatoes. They're dirt cheap. You don't have to buy any fancy sweet potatoes or anything. And uh, if you're starting them in place in the ground in your yard, I would recommend going light on the water. Do not let them get full sun um, and leave a little bit of the surface exposed. Okay, you don't want to bury them too deep and you don't want to water them because they'll just rot. Um, I'm not too sure about starting them in the heat. I've never done that, but I couldn't see any problem doing it. You could always start them indoors and then plant them outside. That's another option. but. We're talking sweet potatoes here, guys, not regular white potatoes. White potatoes are more or less winter crop here. Once the summer comes, and not so much the spring, but the summer, once it comes, man, it just cooks them. So we're talking sweet potatoes. Um, you could probably do yams, too. I've never tried yams, but I do sweet potatoes. So um, basically, uh, with the sweet potatoes, they are living shade, all right? And what you can do is... You can grow them up and over plants, like I've done it over avocados. Um, you can do them over small bananas. Um, what they'll do is, if you get like chicken wire and you make a little arch and you plant sweet potatoes on either side, you don't have to do a lot. I mean, you can do as many as you want, um, but as they grow, you let them grow over that chicken wire. And what it will do is, it'll create an arch of living shade. And since the leaves are transpiring and it creates shade, it's going to give your plant a cooler environment and a more humid environment. You just gotta make sure it's oriented right because you want it sticking out a little bit north in the summer because the sun is a little more north than directly overhead in the summer, okay? And then you want the arch east and west, all right? So you want the north and the south open. And depending on how they grow i mean they'll they'll hang down so you could always hang them down if you're getting too much sun in uh midday from the north um you can let them hang down and shade your tree or banana whatever you have under there um another good thing about sweet potatoes is they are an indicator plant so what i mean by indicator is they're growing over your plant that you're trying to protect so if there's not enough moisture in the soil your sweet potatoes are gonna wilt. They're probably not gonna die. You might lose a couple of leaves if you don't catch it in time, but those are gonna wilt long before your plant that you're protecting under those sweet potatoes will. So you come home from work or whatever and you see your sweet potatoes all wilty. Oh crap, I gotta water. You can run out there and water and chances are your plant underneath is gonna be fine, but they're kind of sacrificial. So um, even if they do get leaf burn or die back or whatever because you missed watering or you're just not watering enough um once you pick up the watering they will pick right back up and put out new leaves like crazy uh sweet potatoes they also have uh they're like a dark green and purple leaf really cool and they get little flowers on them so they're really cool looking you know they give you that contrast of different colors purple green with the little flowers they're good for pollinators and stuff like that I have not had any sort of problems with my sweet potato vines that whenever I grow them, uh, I never have any bugs or anything like that. So um, I'm not saying you're not going to, but chances are 
if your yard's like mine or George's, you shouldn't really have a problem. Um, sweet potatoes are great, so just, you know, you got to keep an eye on watering. Um, if you plant them close to the surface and it's, it's good drainage underneath the uh, sweet potato itself, you know, where the roots are and where the, the plant is growing out, um, as long as you just keep it moist, you should be good. So uh, I would recommend, like I always recommend to everyone, mulch around there, um, wood chip mulch, uh, at least uh, six inches to a foot to a foot and a half thick. All right, compost in place, I always recommend that. Great idea. Another thing that George uh, really took to heart and ran with was um, my homemade sunblock for plants. So if you uh, Google around, you'll find uh, commercially available sunblock for plants and they use it on orchards it's very expensive if you get a little bottle of it um like a spray bottle size um i don't know how many what is that like a quart okay of fluid whatever something like that um it's usually like 60 to 80 bucks all right so the way i make it i'll put a link down in the description um i just use blackboard chalk it's got to be calcium carbonate though there's different formulas for chalk so if you're looking for chalk, make sure it's calcium carbonate. Crayola makes it. Um, I think it's, uh, they call it like anti-dust. Um, you might want to double check on that before you purchase it. But calcium carbonate, guys, it's uh, the main ingredient in Tums. It's not toxic to you, not toxic to the plants. You could spray it on your fruit and then wash it off. Um, like I said, I'm going to put a link down in the description for that. I think I did one just on that, but I also did one on growing avocados, and I also included that in there. Um, once you spray it on, um, it and it dries, it's on there pretty good. I mean, you'd actually have to wet the leaves and scrub them or spray them with soap or something to get it off. Um, you'll see in uh, if you watch my videos with the sunblock in it on the plants, you'll see uh, I've had... Uh, plants that I sprayed last year, last summer, or beginning of last summer actually, that beginning of this summer still had sunblock on the leaves. Okay, it's super cheap, super easy to make. Um, you can make a whole quart in a spray bottle um, for probably, uh, if I had to guess, maybe 50 cents. Okay, so if you wanted to do it in a pump sprayer or something like that, or a battery powered sprayer, um, I don't know about a hose end sprayer because it doesn't spray a fine enough mist, but um, you can make it really cheap. All you need is chalk, dish soap, a spray bottle, and I use uh, like a coffee grinder to grind it up. It's got to be ground to a really fine powder. You'll see in the video if you watch my video. So the uh, sunblock for plants, it's very reflective. It will reflect sunlight. All right. So it's very reflective when the sun rays hit that calcium carbonate homemade sunblock for plants it's going to reflect the light so it doesn't heat your plants leaves as up as much it will help with sunburn it won't help so much if you have like radiant heat source um or a plant that is getting burnt because of drying winds and heat or if the plant doesn't have enough roots to support the top growth okay so sunblock for plants it's just like sunblock for people it's going to protect you from the sun it's not going to protect you from heat or lack of roots giving the plant moisture all right so i got that out of the way um i had a a viewer uh enlightenment garden uh comment about sunblock for plants she never heard of it i think she was buying another product and probably paying a lot of money she's gonna give it a try so i wish her luck with that good luck and uh let me know how it goes leave a comment uh if you watch this video leave a comment in the the bottom and uh, i'd love to hear it so those are uh two of the things that he's done um in the video you'll see i haven't really except for the one section i haven't really seen him uh put up too much shade um he's just going with it you know the plants are gonna survive or they're not um one thing that uh he really needs to work on though guys is shade so i gave him uh one of these back here uh shangri-la mulberry so um george and i we trade plants i you know and 
I really want to see him succeed and uh, makes excellent content for the channel. So I'm always giving him plants, you know, I'm, that's just how I am. A lot of customers come here and I'm always giving plants away, you know, seeds and, you know, oh, you don't have a Moringa here, have a Moringa. You want some seeds? Go ahead. Roselle hibiscus. Here's some seeds, you know? So I'm always trying to help people out. And George is a great friend. He's a really great guy. So, um, I'm trying to, I, I think I'm going to grow him some Chaya and we're going to plant that hopefully around his yard. Hopefully he's cool with that. Uh, maybe some more Moringa, you know, these could all be sacrificial plants. He, they don't have to be permanent, but he really does need the shade. If he had, if you planted more shade last, uh, well, beginning of the spring, if you planted more shade, he'd, he'd probably have a uh, little less burn on his plants. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to pitch that idea to him. I know you're watching George. So let's get some shade planted. So anyway, uh, let's head over there and you guys can see exactly what's going on in his yard. And uh, like I said, guys, uh, everyone I'm talking to, everyone George is talking to, everyone's having problems with one plant or another um, in this heat. You know, I've had some some problems. I've told you guys I've lost a whole bunch of tissue culture bananas. Um, some of my bananas that I planted in the spring in ground that were doing great once this heat hit, they kind of fried a little bit. Um, my avocados, uh, they were getting a little bit of radiant heat off of uh, the ground next to them and the wall behind them. So I got a little bit of uh, burn on those leaves, but they should be okay. I put up a shade cloth umbrella. So hopefully it'll shade, not so much the plant, but it'll shade the concrete ground and the concrete wall that are underneath it and behind it. So let's get over to George's house and take a look at his yard. All right, you're back. And uh, looking at the updates from last time you were here. It was about a month ago, I think, right? Maybe two. Two? Yeah, I think yeah. it's been two months. Jeez. But uh, some of the stuff is doing great. Some of it, not so well. Uh, the bamboo, great. So we come over here. All this foliage grew and it's the bamboo used to stand like seven feet tall and the bam the, the foliage just weighing it all down so it's pushed these three shoots out and they're now starting to put on foliage of their own i think in that storm that we got the other night the wind was whipping it around and kind of got this one all bent out of shape but I couldn't be happier with all that growth. All right. So what do you got going in the bottom here? Bottom's all sweet potato vine. That is a and lot of sweet potatoes. I had a contractor here recently asking me all about the property and asking me what this was. And when I said sweet potato, his eyes like popped out of his head. And I told <laughs> him, if you want anything for the summertime, sweet potato tell them to go to walmart or something and just grab a bag of sweet potatoes and yeah. plop them in everything around here seems to just be getting fried but as the hotter it gets this stuff just seems to be bulletproof and just wants to use the energy to grow yeah all right and then so let's see what we got in here we shade got structure a low so quat right over here low quat beneath that we have a dwarf orinoco that i it's in a pot I had to take all my potted plants and put them in here. Number one, they were getting fried, but number two, all the um, cactus friends have been really bothering my potted plants lately. Wow. And they'll, they'll come in, they'll dig holes in the soil and some of the smaller stuff, they'll just sit there and pull it right out of the soil and just drop it. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I come out and find, um, what was the last one I had? Uh, some basil growing. Huh. And they just pulled it right out, dropped it, and my basil is just laying there frying in the sun. Oh, that sucks. Uh, um, next to it, I got that uh, sweet lemon that you gave me. Oh, that was the one grown from seed, yeah. Yeah, it seems to be. It was it's actually, it was starting to really brown out, and it has bounced back big time. Um, mango. Oh, I mean, he's really kind of topped out in here. Yeah, I'm going to have to get him in the ground come fall. Where are you going to plant him? In this area? I was thinking out in this area over by 
somewhere around the sugar cane out in that area. Yeah. In the main part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have what uh, else? Looks like yeah. a papaya growing Some right papaya. there. I mean, the minute I put the papaya down here, it went from about that thin and it was only about this tall to just wow what kind of papaya Meridol. okay i just took some seeds and was able to sprout some out nice and that's what i ended up with and i got his brother back here so they're gonna be fat and happy when i finally plant them oh yeah uh, <clears throat> what else we got that moringa Now the moringa actually was starting to get fried and it lost, it turned yellow and lost all of its leaves. And since I put it under here and it's catching the water from this spray head, I mean, it, it just greened right back up, pushed oh, wow. all of its leaves right back out. Um, back here, we got that ice cream bean. He's doing good, constantly pushing new growth. And the Queensland bottle trees that they gave me. Oh, wow. Yeah. That got big yeah. quick. Huh. That's almost like the one in your front yard. Yeah, that's a lot bigger than the one in my front yard. Really? Yeah. Well, mine, I uh, potted them up and the pots were crap. Then I repotted them, let them grow for another month, and then that was the best one. So I planted it in the yard and it's, it's doing great on a watering schedule surrounded by grass so there's its brother where are you going to so, plant those have you decided yet? i have not even decided yet on those front yard man one on either side of the driveway yeah <laughs> <laughs> take years to grow out yeah they say they take about uh anywhere from five to eight years to get to uh the size where they start getting a bottle trunk okay uh, and the guy that did not do well at all was my avocado. I don't know if you can even see him in here. I ran all this sweet potato up here. Yeah. Trunk's still green. Yeah. Leaves are just dried and dead. Well, we'll see what That's happens. It. If not, we'll have to get you another one going. <laughs> so, I've, uh, I thought the shade structure would do it. It didn't really do anything. So you advised me to yeah. get the sweet potato up and over it. Mm -hmm. This now, once I did get the sweet potato over it, this one, it hung in there for a while. Yeah. But the leaves have just, I mean, this unrelenting heat that we've had. Yeah. The leaves have just dried up. And this is uh, like you were saying, this is a pretty hot area. You got the house there holding heat. Yep. You have this wall here holding heat. Yep. So this probably gets, what, like seven, eight hours of sun? I will probably six to seven. Six to seven. But, you know, that's enough to do it, right? That's, yeah. <laughs> that's enough to heat everything up. Um, this guy, the heat lover, I mean, the Jamaican cherry, you were with me when I bought it. Yeah. I mean, it's just a 15-inch stick like this. And yeah. This is what, almost three months later? Wow. And this was the, the main leader and it's like up to my nose and I'm standing in mulch. So it's a uh, probably a little bit taller than that. And it's getting flowers here. Yep. Right there. That's why they call it the strawberry tree. Cause it looks like a strawberry flower. So this is the red berried variety, correct? Yes. Okay. As far as I know. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a difference until you told me. Yeah. Red and yellow. Supposedly the yellow are a little bit bigger and some people say sweeter. I've never tried the yellow, so I couldn't tell you. Um, but I got a yellow growing, so we're going to swap the cuttings in yeah. the future yeah. for sure. But uh, so these guys, I they mean, grow very, very fast. Very fast. Just to add water. They don't require much fertilizer or anything. Yep. What and would you say, like, if, if you planted a 15-inch um, mulberry at, at the three-month mark, where would it be? Um, 
I would say uh, it probably, if you if you did it right, it'd probably be about this size. Okay. It may not have as many branches, or it may have more branches and not be as tall, but I would say growth rate-wise, it's probably on par with this. So there you go, everyone. Fast-growing shade trees. Yep. You're looking at them. So the difference between mulberries and these guys, though, is mulberries fruit once a year. These guys fruit all summer, right? From what I hear, they'll fruit... Um, I mean, you really, what everything I'm hearing, you have to protect these. Like even people in Florida protect these in the, in winter. the winter time. But then once they, the protection is, is gone and the winter is over and they come back to life, they'll fruit from spring all the way into fall. Oh, wow. That's excellent. Yeah, the whole entire time. And they taste like? They say they taste like cotton candy and, and or crunch berries from Captain Crunch. Wow. So. I'm looking forward to it. Oh yeah, for sure. But uh, at least that's that's the difference between I guess these and mulberries. Another difference would be you got to protect these in the winter, whereas mulberries just go deciduous, lose their leaves, and you don't have to worry about them. Yeah, yeah. So that's it for this side of the house. I mean. We got a dead zucchini over here that I pulled this morning. Oh yeah, it looks like <laughs> one of my tree collars that I trimmed up. Yeah. How's yeah, your uh, your dragon fruits dragon going? Dragon fruits. One of them getting a little bit of sunburn, huh? A little bit. Uh, the other one over here, I I looked at it one day. It was turning brown. And yeah. I saw a giant gaping hole in it. And I think the the birds pecked the hole in it. Oh no. And it just. Not too long after that, just kind of liquefied. Yeah. Yeah, I have some that are in the sun that kind of did something similar. And then some that are in shade that did something similar. I couldn't tell you why. I don't know. You might be onto something. Maybe a, a bug or a bird or something poked a hole in it, and it just got some sort of infection and turned brown. And I think when I was at your house the last, uh, you gave me a couple of pieces. Oh, yeah. I think those were the yellow and uh, dragon fruits. I know that one's yellow. For sure, but uh, I planted him right here, and he's sending a little shoot up. Oh, cool! And then, yeah, come uh, uh, fall, they're probably really gonna take off. The other ones, right here. Oh yeah, teeny tiny, but it's in a good spot. It gets some good shade, I bet. And the bower vines, <laughs> the sun comes up right here. And just goes across the sky like this now. They they were getting hit all day long by sun. Yeah. They hung in there. They even had new growth coming out of them. And then I came out one day and it's brown. They have just, you scratched the cambium at the bottom to see if it's green? I have not yet. Yeah. I mean, I was going to trim them all back yeah. and leave the vine just to see if it'll sprout new life come fall. Um, the blueberry, he's hanging in there. I mean, these leaves are crispy, but he keeps... He's sending new growth out. Oh, that's cool. Have you gotten any blueberries off of it? No. <laughs> I mean, it made some little blueberries, but they were like little hard rocks. Yeah. They never softened or sweetened up. Kind of like a fig I have over here. Yeah, I get that with figs too. So what's this poor guy here? This poor guy is the Asian pear. Oh, no. This is a grafted or is it a cutting grown? This, this is a Lowe's clearance, $10. $10? It's called oh, a man. 20th century Asian pear. Oh, wow. Graft cool. of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you got the graft right here. I put it away from the sun. Yeah. So it shot, it did, when it was growing, it shot this growth out of here. And then some, some growth up top. And you can see where the, the yellow leaves from the new growth never really turned green. Yeah. It just got too hot too fast and just they started frying up wow yeah asian pear is supposed to do really good here supposed, i guess uh, yeah they need to get rooted out and get established before yeah. they could take that heat huh yeah i hear they're supposed to take our summers great yeah Whew. yeah i got a uh, santa rosa plum in my front yard and it's just finally putting out some uh new growth at the base i think it's trying to cover its trunk okay the shade itself but yeah it really yeah. hasn't done much since Makes the uh, heat hit in the past month it just sat there and did nothing it's not burnt but still not doing anything so onto the sugar cane 
this took uh so today's what sunday the 30th 30th yes 30th, July so last 30th. wednesday we took we got our first monsoon storm of the season and out here we had a lot of wind and this guy was <laughs> it was uh kind of straight up like that and the wind is just kind of blasted him so yeah now he's leaning this way they have a very fibrous weak root system just like lawn grass and yeah they're so top heavy a little bit of wind and they fall over and there's so much mulch and we got so much water too so yeah like the alcatillo in front did that the the soil turned to mud basically and then we had all that wind and he he turned to his side as well yeah so that you're just gonna stake it and Hope for the best, right? Yep. Yeah. And, and then come fall, you're going to do a lot of propagation on that. Yeah. <laughs> in uh, another papaya. Just before summer hit, I planted some papaya over here. And are those seeds? I planted three, and this one is the one that made it. The those other... were seeds or sprouts? Seeds. This oh, wow. is Meridol as well. So he came from the same batch as the the other two you saw under the oh, shade wow. structure. And then we have more uh, sweet potatoes. Sweet, potato. sweet potatoes everywhere. Yeah and uh bulletproof sweet potatoes you'd recommend that for everyone right they everyone. take i they mean take the heat they take the sun just each, water them each one of these was one slip yeah i mean when i started out it was you know the just the little slip maybe a few leaves on it and uh the roots wow and uh if you know you get one slip that does this you know yeah imagine if you just filled in each and every area with yeah. a slip. I mean, that's a lot of ground cover. Yep. So as far as potatoes go, regular white potatoes, there are no, no in our summer. Sweet <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> oh yeah. Sweet potatoes are the way to go. Summer, living summer. ground cover, living shade. They'll yeah. keep everything cool, trap in that moisture. Even if you don't eat the sweet potato. Yeah. Some people are like, oh, I don't like sweet potato. We use, uh, use it for what it does. We harvest our sweet potatoes in the fall because the, in the fall, the vines basically dry up. We follow them to where the sweet potato is, pull them out, and we make sweet potato fries. Yeah. And they're like, you can't beat the flavor of Arizona in ground ground sweet potatoes compared to store bought. There's no comparison. Yeah. None at all. And even the, uh, the leaves are edible. The vine part is edible. I did not a know lot that. Of Asian, people? Asians use it in um, a lot of their soups and stews and oh, stuff wow. like that. Yeah. Whereas a regular potato, I think they're toxic. Shade. Yeah. Right? They're a nightshade. Yeah. These aren't nightshades. So you can't eat those leaves, but you can yep. eat these. There you go. So they'd probably be good if you had animals too. Yeah. Livestock. Livestock. Goats, yep. chickens, chickens, probably all sorts of stuff would eat that. So Herbivorous it's a win -win. Iguanas. Yeah. Yeah. Go over to Walmart, grab a giant bag or... Costco or something and just start planting them everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Now I noticed too with sweet potatoes, when you first plant them, if they don't have roots, if they're just smooth and they're a potato, they don't like a lot of water. No, have you okay. found that? I haven't done it. No? Yeah, so- I purposely, when I did it, I, I started them inside. I took one potato, put mm -hmm. it in a, a tray with soil. Yeah. And started letting it, you know, put shoot out. out and yeah. then I clipped all those, put them in water. And what was amazing, like what a week later, the whole entire cup was full of roots. Oh, wow. I mean, they root out fast. Yeah. So you could buy probably like three or four and do it that way. It'd wind up with hundreds. Yeah. If you kept at it. Yeah. Especially if you wanted, if you like sweet potatoes and you wanted different varieties, you could just go to the store, buy one of each variety. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So like I was saying, I noticed if you take a sweet potato and you plant it in our ground here, especially if you plant it in clay soil, they rot really easy. Okay. So if you're getting them started in the ground, like in the spring or something, uh, you got to be very water conscious. Do not overwater them because they just will rot. Okay. And plant them very close to the surface. If you could leave maybe, uh, you know, the top portion of it just slightly exposed, it'd probably be a lot better. But yeah, good drainage. Okay. You know, maybe sandy type cactus soil or something to plant them in. Well, I mean... Like I told you, there. I the when I was done with the actual potato itself, I put it over there by the bamboo. Yeah, and that sucker. I think that's why over there it's so just so much growth. Yeah, I think it's coming from that potato itself. All right. But, well, let's move on. So, what do we right. got here going up the the fence? 
Oh, my poor passion fruit. <laughs> Taking a beating. Yeah, it is. I mean, I was prepared for it. Everybody said that uh, they really take a beating in our summers. Yeah. But, uh, and I mean, what kind of passion fruit are they? Are they all the same? They're all, all three? Frederick. Frederick, yeah. okay. And I give them water. I mean, they're, they're getting water, water. And even they, I give them additional water throughout the day with the hose. Yeah. Uh, just trying to keep them alive. Uh, I saw someone post the other day uh, here in Tucson, and theirs was just nuked. Really? It's completely dried. Wow, that's odd, but, too, because Tucson's a lot less hot, a lot more humid, and they get a lot more rain than we but do, like too. you and I talk about, like, people started asking them questions, and they were running it on drip. Oh, God, yeah. So That'll do it. Boom. <laughs> so, so, just to let the audience know, you're using what to irrigate? I'm using micro sprayers. All right. My man. Right by your foot. There we go. Right by your foot. These guys. Perfect. When the system turns on, each little hole sprays water out of them. That's great. So, oh, what's this poor guy here? Um, that was a Java plum. Oh, no. When I bought the Java plum, there were two in there. Yeah. The the bigger one, he survived. He's actually been growing. He's been right. on growth. But the smaller one, all right. All right so that so. was the dead Java plum. <laughs> Under the live Java plum. Seems to be doing well. Getting a little crunchy, but he's actually, I want to say, I want to say like when I first got him, he was like just up to here. So he's put on all this growth and you see there's new growth coming out the top here. Even right here. And you got homemade sunblock. Yes. Yeah, the edibles and exotics. That's thing. awesome. And it's working good for yeah. you? Yeah. I mean, easy to make, easy to apply. Be in this yeah. heat, too. Yeah. Every and little like, bit helps, right? Yeah. And you, I talk to you a lot, but I, there's other people I, I talk to, and it seems to not just be the sun this year, it's the heat itself. Yeah. Because I have stuff in complete shade that is just getting bright and brown and crunchy. Yeah. I have the same yeah. problem. Yeah. So, yeah, it's got to be uh, low humidity, drying winds, and... Yeah, Just cooking them. All right, so that where we got. This is a little bit of that. I thought this was going to go more nuts than it, it has, but this is that um, Kiwano or African horn melon. Yeah, hasn't really done much of anything. Hmm. Just kind of gets intertangled in here with the yeah. sweet potato. And then the uh, brand new addition from Edibles and Exotics, the Shangri-La Mulberry. Awesome. Planted this exactly a week ago. And this poor thing's been through a lot in its first week. <laughs> uh, two monsoon storms in its first week. And it was, there were winds that were just whipping this thing all over. So some of the leaves got really ripped apart like these. Yeah. And the others are trying to adapt to absolute a, a full day and full sun yeah so it's going through a lot right now but it is there are areas where it is putting on new growth oh yeah i could see so, yeah some little buds coming here and new leaves were starting to grow here yeah yeah and uh this guy's getting plenty of water I'm get my shade my yeah. shadow out of here but yep. yeah the ground's nice and moist yeah, and it's got another micro sprayer on it. And like I told you, um, I want to say three weeks ago, I was getting ready for this. So three weeks ago, I dug a hole two feet wide, two feet deep. Yeah. And then I replaced the, the soil. I did one third sand, one third peat, one third native soil. Yeah. Mixed it all up, got that in here. And got the micro sprayer on there so that that area was getting water prior to me putting the plant in the ground. Then when I actually planted, I just raked the mulch back and the shovel just went right in. Wow. And I brought that soil up and it was, it was nice and cool. It was That's moist great. and it was cool. Got this guy in there, 
cut the bag and cut some of the bag just completely off of there and that way the side wall of the root system could be exposed to the new soil yeah and uh we'll put everything back put a bag of uh the composted cow manure on top of that uh -huh. and got the mulch back on here so fingers are really crossed with this one yeah it should really take off Hopefully our monsoon se uh, season really kicks in and our humidity goes up yeah. and temperatures come down. Then it'll just, I mean, it'll explode with growth, but yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, for any of you watching right now, we actually had something come through last night while I was sleeping and the humidity is really high right now. Yeah, I saw on the way over here, uh, probably about like five miles up to 60 mm -hmm. from here, from your exit, uh, there were puddles in the road. So yeah, okay. yeah it wasn't so much in your neighborhood but over there yeah it was it was pretty good so so another reason i mean i chose this because it's going to be a shade tree um provide shade for other trees that i may plant here yeah but one of the big things is right where it's at the as the sun starts setting out here the master bedroom is just right over here so i want this thing to get nice and tall and shade out that master bedroom oh yeah the sun setting it'll get big quick good yeah mine as people have seen in other videos and as you know mine is from the same batch as this one and it's got to be about 20 feet tall already so yeah. you know and that's just one year worth of growth so i would assume this this one next year this time next year will probably be 15 20 feet tall yeah. good no doubt all right so at, le at least we know the roots are cool yeah for sure all right, All right, so so this is the, I mean, the 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 one that that I mean has just really been absolutely bulletproof. This is that unknown white Italian fig, and when I planted that one, I want to say I did that last last winter spring, right? Yeah. We were coming up on spring, I planted it, and it was maybe like a stick like this yeah so i mean for it to almost be coming up to my chest right now yeah and this thing hasn't shown any signs of stress no brown yeah mine's nothing. the same way and yeah. you got some figs going on there yep that's excellent oh yeah there's some more up here yeah that's been that relatively new yeah. every time i look in that that area it's pushing leaves yeah and the figs are relatively new yeah, white Italian's great. I just counted. I have, uh, I think, one left, an air layer that's about, I don't know, three or four feet tall. And then I got about 15 that I'm going to air layer off in the, uh, oh, once the weather starts cooling down. So yeah. probably in the fall, I'll have those in pots ready for next spring. But it's an excellent variety. And uh, woodpeckers and then, love them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you have woodpeckers, yeah. you're going to lose a lot of fruit. We do. <laughs> I hear them hitting neighbors' yards at like five in the morning. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I know. I had the one that's eating my figs. He taps on my neighbor across the street. Their uh, their sewer vent on the roof. Okay. Yeah. Is that what it is? Every day, all day long. Because I wonder what. Thing. Like you can hear it from the roof, but I'm like, what are they pecking on the roof? Yeah. Maybe it's that's... the little caps on the sewer vents. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> at least is, that's where it is. By this me. is his brother Brunswick. Planted all right. Same time, relatively same size. And these, both of these, you got from edibles and exotics awesome and like i've told you this thing is just put on figs like crazy but yeah. i don't know if he's just storing energy in them because they they don't they're ripen hard. they're hard as a rock yeah if if you have hard figs what i've noticed is water but this is first year growth yeah i mean that could be it too that could be it too yeah you could try watering it but it could just be that it's so damn hot out and this guy's in full sun too that it yeah. just doesn't have the water supply to support itself and the fruit so but you maybe um, maybe uh, you'll get a, a breba crop out of it for next spring maybe <laughs> but this is my absolute favorite tasting fig so far yeah the white the unknown white italian is my second favorite really yeah this is my first and uh yeah, I just love them, but unfortunately, uh, where mine's planted, it's in the shade, so I only have one little fig, and it's probably <laughs> going to take forever to ripen. <laughs> so, 
All right. All right. So what else do we have going? Uh, da, 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 What's this the, here? The kumquat. Oh no. Yeah, he kind of nuked out, but is putting on all new growth. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave him be. I may put the little shade structure that was over the the old Java plum over this guy. Yeah. See if that helps out any. Then the um, gold nugget mandarin. So last time you were here, we were talking about the leaf curl. Yeah. But as it pushes new growth, they're fine. It's all looking straight and fine. So you just up the watering. I up the watering and I I applied the the tree paint. That, yeah. Those are the only two things that I did. So. So your advice then? Up the watering and protect it from the sun. Awesome. Yeah. Especially when they're when the growth habit is like this, like citrus naturally want to weep. Yeah. And grow and protect the the trunk. If you don't have that, you got to protect it yourself. Yep. That's uh, yeah. in nature. A lot of people don't realize they try to tree their tr trim their trees to look like a stick with a ball at the top but then they wonder why they have issues because their trunk is getting cooked to death yeah yeah especially with fruit trees yeah um let's see that was the peach oh that's but the one that had the, the fruit on it the last time yep looks like it's getting a little cooked too and the nectarine back here in the corner they both look the same yeah I bet next year, even if we have this kind of heat, they'll probably do fine I just because they'll be so Yeah, I kind of expected that from them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, and like I said, the, the, the top leaves that are exposed to the sun are curling up, whereas the leaves that are down further in, they're yeah. still open. Just kind of getting a little yellowing to them. Yeah. But, you know, I've upped the watering on everything. I mean... You and me you, both. Yeah, everybody. You know, I was, just to let the viewers know, I was telling George uh, last year, uh, you know, I had a thick layer of mulch and our summer was so mild and humid. I was watering every two or three days. This year I'm watering uh, 30 minutes a day, uh, basically uh, eight minutes, three times a day. And, and that's just barely enough too. Sometimes I got to spot yeah. water plants. So and, I have, uh, like we showed all these on micro sprayers and I've been doing four intervals a day uh, starting at six in the morning and going like every three or four hours yeah. until about seven at night. Oh, wow. So four times at 10 minutes a pop. So 40 wow. minutes of watering. And how many gallons per hour do these emitters put out? Well, if you have them fully open, they put out 20. Okay. Is what they're supposed to. Yeah. Put out. And then you, so, uh, you lose a little head pressure because you got so many. So, yeah. you know, you're, are yours fully open? I did not fully okay um i got them cranked down a few turns because if you fully open them they just squirt everywhere they well what happens is that every time you put pressure on them it, it kind of lifts on the threads and then yeah. releases and and it works its way off and blows the head oh, okay. completely off at yeah. some point so i got them tightened down a, a, a little bit so yeah. that that won't happen but so I you're probably them. doing somewhere between 15 and like 12 gallons an hour probably okay that's cool and i ran the math and kind of figured each one would be every every 10 minutes it would be three gallons okay so each plant's getting 12 gallons per day all day long and spread yeah. out throughout the spread day. out throughout the day yeah yeah and then you got what in the background there we got some lemongrass lemongrass more lemongrass more lemon. george is this? the uh king of lemongrass he gave me mine and Told me how to grow it. The weird thing about this one was I was telling Kurt this story. The the other two are planted in other areas of the yard. When I planted them, everything had emitters. And one day I was going through the yard while the emitters were on and just checking to make sure everything was working fine. And I got over here and I couldn't hear anything. And I'm looking all around. I got the gloves on and dug all around. Couldn't find an emitter. I planted the thing and I forgot to put an emitter to it. <laughs> And this one is probably three time, three to four times bigger than the other two that wow. have had water the whole entire time. Huh. So, don't know. But now it does have an emitter. Great. So, what do we have growing back here? This poor guy is the loofah. Um, 
I haven't got any loofahs. I think that it's just too hot and dry. Yeah. That when the seeds or the seeds, the, the flowers start to form, like here's a dried one. I think they're just drying right on the vine. Yeah. That's too bad. So they don't even have enough time to form the fruit. Yeah. But yeah, I've been coming out here the last few weeks and like all of these just would be, all of these would be yellow. Wow. But damn heat. Yeah. What do we have here? Oh, that's the Barbados cherry. So. Yeah, they are a slow a, grower, huh? He's a little starter. He actually surprised me in the spring how how fast he was growing, but this, this, once again, second the heat came on. Yeah. And that these things are supposed to be heat loving, but I think he might be just too small. Yeah. But uh, he was going gangbusters there in the springtime. <laughs> um anything this area is what's this fig here oh this one is the uh violet de bordeaux all right and it's got a totally different type of leaf structure compared to the other two yeah really skinny and uh finger like yeah that's what's funny is uh, you know you've been doing this a while when you can start identifying figs from their leaf structure oh yeah <laughs> i went over to yeah. your house and walking through i was like oh this is your uh Bonanza, or not your Bonanza, the your, uh, what's that one? Uh, Brunswick. Brunswick. Uh, and you're like, yeah, that's the Brunswick. <laughs> that's the white Italian. Yeah. Um, these are hibiscus. I thought these were going to die because I transplanted them right at the beginning of summer. And they've actually bounced back pretty well. Hmm. And these are uh, not edible. They're no, regular. they're just the... the landscaping that came with the house yeah that have been moved around several times already all right all right and now so, the desert section yeah so you were here last and i i could swear like when i watched that video this thing was still like this tall and what is that and one this is the um the ariana pomegranate okay i have a parfionca out front but i couldn't believe like the once we started getting some heat the the growth that this put on which on um you watch anyone that gardens around here and they talk about their top five list pomegranates is always in the top five for arizona and now i can see why they take it like a champ yeah so there's I mean, absolutely no leaf damage no leaf damage a oh, no. little bit of browning tips but yeah it's still going strong. Uh, finally giving into this heat. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, everything that was here before. I uh, haven't... Actually, I added... Uh, Is that a San Pedro back there? Yeah, the San Pedro. And then the uh, totem pole. Where'd you get this one? Edibles and exotics. All right. <laughs> Now, the totem pole is kind of getting a little nuked on the top. Yeah, mine do the same thing. Um, yeah. I would throw some shade over it. Okay. Yeah, they, until they get about, well, being next to the wall like that, it's it's probably going to get cooked for uh, a couple of years. Mine are yeah. doing the same thing that are next to walls, but uh, once they get about like three, four feet tall, you should be past that point. Okay. But yeah, I'd give it some shade because it's going to get cooked. <laughs> Will do. It already is. <laughs> so. Yeah. And then this guy, I mean, when you were here last, this is the sugarcane jujube. It just had this branch basically just coming. This is the, the part that was grafted onto the rootstock and this was yeah. coming up. And now all of this has come up. Wow. Since you've been here last. And it's kind of leaning to the side from this last storm. So I'm going oh, yeah. to prop it back up. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, another absolute crazy heat-loving plant. It's, it almost seems like almost with the sweet potatoes, the hotter it gets, the more this thing just puts on growth Wow! rather than getting nuked. The only part that's gotten nuked is the, the old growth. You can see some yellowing on the leaves and the, yeah. the branches here. But all the new growth is going strong. One cool thing about these, I was... Uh, 
out a few mornings. Um, the little flowers that it creates, the um, tarantula hawks like these really? for some reason. <laughs> so they were all over pollinating it. And then when they take off, it sounds like a hummingbird. <laughs> And my poor garden. So I did a lot of work just this morning on this. And I had winter squash in here that I had the vines running up and over the walls. Wow. Yeah. And they, they were growing and they just kept growing all the way back down the side wall. And I guess what they were doing was they, they were pushing all their energy to the new growth. But then everything that was here just looked dead and blasted out and yeah. woody so i was just like yeah hey, let's rain all this in and cut it all down yeah i was definitely getting more vegetative growth out of them than i was fruit growth yeah so um what's left is the this is the chicago hardy fig right here even though it was bred for chicago it's doing great in arizona huh yeah I guess the, the hardy aspect of it is supposed to be for the winter time. Yeah. And then the uh, Tainung number two papaya. See, so that's got a nice the, pass, huh? The plant sale. <laughs> Still doing pretty good. He just recently started the wilting like this. Yeah. I mean, he. Well, you did just uh, remove all of this here, right? Th so, just this morning. Yeah, so, uh, well. Yeah, this has been like the, over the past week starting to wilt. Like he's did all this, all this yellow here was actually new growth. He pushed yeah. this, and then this started going away. And then, but pretty much all this summer, I mean, every time I looked at him, he's just been full and green and all new growth. Yeah, so he's just now starting to probably just get beat down by the sun. Yeah, they can only take so much, right? Yep. But it's just amazing. Like I put him in the ground and yet another one where the, the stock was maybe that thick and he was only about this tall. So he's done all this growth and the thickening of the stock in just a matter of two, three months. Wow. Um what else we got a chaya the gone? Only thing, yeah the only other Where's thing of chaya? like real significance to me everything else seems to be going out or going yeah. away is that chaya i'm gonna have to get you so. some more chaya because i got a lot going and it'd be good for this area you could plant a whole bunch of them but yeah the chaya is just it's going strong i mean he did have just like two or three absolute yellow wilted leaves and i cut them off yeah but this is I couldn't ask for anything more. I mean, when I planted it, it was just just a little teeny tiny stalk like that. And he's since grown that thick of a stalk. And then, God, I don't know how many branches we got coming off of here. But he just keeps going strong. Yeah. I would assume by the end of the summer, it'll probably be uh, probably two or three times that height. Yeah. I hope. Yeah, that'd be, uh, that'd be great for this shade. area, though, if we planted a whole bunch of them. I can get maybe uh, 10 or so started for you, and we'll just plop them in the ground in various places. Okay. Um, yeah, other than that, I just got some peppers and eggplant. The tomatoes have kind of... They're still throwing tomatoes on there, but... Lots of tomatoes. Yeah. I just did a huge trim job just because they they kind of got so big and just overran the area yeah um there was only one that really dried up the rest of them are still green and going strong so and i mean the thing that surprised me is the um asparagus i thought those would dry up in our summer heat and those things are just growing strong and green. Yeah, I thought those would be way too sensitive.
yeah, they're doing really, really good. And this is uh, more of our favorite potato. Yeah. <laughs> Taking over. I mean, yeah, just absolutely. And then some more lemongrass over here. Yep. See, not quite as robust as that other one. Probably not getting as much sun, not full day sun like the other one. Yeah, so this was the actual, the white potato bed. And when I was done with it, I just kind of loosely planted some carrot seeds in there. Those have kind of come up, but the sweet potato is just completely overrunning this bed. So those mm. are your carrots. Yeah, these are like short, the short squatty carrots. <laughs> Almost like a oh yeah, look at that rutabaga. And it's a tap root with hair roots coming off of it for feeding, correct? Yep. I just didn't want to plant a variety that grew long and took a long time to grow. Yeah. Knowing that the summer was coming on. So. That's about it for right now. So, uh, you have any suggestions for people dealing with this heat? water <laughs> water and shade what well, i mean <laughs> i mean our water bill is astronomical but if you want everything to die then stop watering yeah but um it's well, how not how much, it's, you, how it's, much it's, are you spending for water let's just say ballpark figure like a hundred a month probably one to 150 one to 150 yeah. a month and that's unfortunately because... we're not on municipal water we're on private okay so we pay more than most people would yeah yeah, I'm, I'm right around 100, 120 also, and, uh, you know, city of Mesa water. But last year, uh, my bill was probably uh, half to two-thirds of what it was, what it is this year. Okay. Just because of the heat, so. Yeah. Hopefully last year we, was a little bit more forgiving on the heat. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, big time, yeah. Heat and humidity. That's so. what I keep, you know, I'm in some gardening Facebook groups, and that's what everyone is saying is that this year is just been astronomical for the heat and yeah and their water bills are up there as well oh yeah so but you know it's a small price to pay i mean if you think about it like let's say 100 150 bucks a month you know and that's just for so far june july yeah probably august yeah, yeah. um i mean i want to say winter time they were probably 50 bucks yeah so 50 60 somewhere in there and that's just for your yard water or is that for the whole that's that's the whole house okay so if you factor in baths and showers and washing yeah. dishes and laundry and whatever else you're using it for yeah so if your standard bill is 60 bucks in the winter time because i was barely using any water for this then um so yeah so you're stacking probably another 60 dollars on top of that to water the yard i mean if I was actually producing stuff, that would be great. <laughs> but yeah. now it's just keeping stuff alive. Yeah. But I know that once you get to the production level, then you're producing rare fruit that you can't even get in the store. So yeah. the price tag on it's going to be $10 a pound plus easily. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So I hope you found that uh, enlightening. Um, like I said uh, in the beginning of the video, uh, you know, we're all having problems and, you know, we just got to figure it out you know each each plant's different you know uh species to species and where it's planted in your yard how much sun it's getting water this and that so you know when it comes to like if you're watching a video and you're looking for like some definitive answer unless someone like me or you know someone else who's really into plants master gardener can come to your place and actually look at your stuff Sometimes it's a little difficult to tell you exactly what you need to do, but, um, you know, he's lost a few, few plants. I've lost a few plants. I'm sure you guys have, so don't feel bad. You know, this is a, a very extreme summer, so I'm probably going to make it out to George's house again um, late summer, early fall, and we'll see what actually survived, what's bouncing back, and... Uh, Hopefully we can get some more plants planted in his yard and, and we can see how that Shangri-La mulberry is doing. 
and you know hopefully it uh, starts budding out for them and gets nice and big and you know we're just gonna keep continuing the videos guys if you have any suggestions for uh, George's yard uh, different types of plants I know I've suggested a few uh, I'm not a big fan of guava fruit and I don't think George is either but I think uh, you should plant some guavas so if you guys think so too hey put it in the comments let him know you know he's gonna be looking at the comments just like me and uh, you know any other plants you guys could think of um, big or small ground cover whatever it may be put them down in the comments and we'll try to get those into his yard you know it's always good to have viewer input guys um, you know I'd like you guys to if you make suggestions you know for for a video or the channel or whatever I'd like to try to get that going that way you know you guys get a little involved in the channel and uh, makes it a little more fun for everybody you know it gives gives me something to work on gives George something to work on and and brings you guys back and just keep the ball rolling you know guys so uh, that's gonna be it for this video um, I'm gonna be doing a, an update on my neighbor's tree which was the Hong Kong orchid that I brought back to life it's been uh, about two weeks and a day now I just haven't had time to shoot the video so uh, I'm gonna try to get over there uh, maybe tomorrow or the next day shoot the video and hopefully get it up posted this weekend so uh, so that's gonna be it for this video guys please don't forget to like subscribe share hit the bell help this channel grow and until the next video guys keep growing